What is up, DCS crew? Welcome back today. We are going to check out uh, two knives that um, fit in the same family. I guess you can call them the big bro and the little bro, or the big bro, I don't know, I guess the, the mid bro <laughs> and the small bro. Uh, in this particular case, I'm talking about uh, the Isham, uh, the Elijah Isham design, uh, the reticulin. Okay, uh, this particular one that I have is BT1810F as a designation. And uh, for the first time on the channel, I'm actually unveiling BT2003A, which is the medium size uh, reticulant. So there's a couple of things that these uh, share as far as similarities are concerned, but um, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it at that and get to the intro. So after that, we can go ahead and show off the knives, show off a couple of things that are very similar and a couple of things that are different and uh, give my final thoughts about them, uh, uh, whether good or bad, all right? So stay tuned, uh, wait for the intro and I will be right back with you. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. So first and foremost, let's get to the nitty gritty. Let's go ahead and start with the little guy in the room. Uh, this is the Italian with the Napoleon complex, <laughs> the best tech reticulant. As, as you can see, he's a, he's a pretty small guy, but uh, don't let the size fool you. He will slice you up something nasty. Um, this is one of those that it's uh, uh, a purposely designed folding knife that um, not only allows you to be able to clip it in something like a fifth pocket or even just in your pocket, um, it's legal in most places that allow a locking uh, folding knife in the sense that I think it's like a, a inch and a half, almost two inch blade. And um, S35VN on the steel uh, titanium uh, scales, which in this case, this particular version is anodized, as you can see. All right, it's got the Isham insignia on one side and it has the Best Tech insignia on the other. Um, this has um, satin flats and a stonewashed grind on both sides. And um, the clip itself is just your standard titanium clip. Uh, it's non-anodized, all right? So that's this particular version. Now, a lot of people were like, guys, uh, hey, Best Tech, we really like this design. It looks awesome. But uh, I, 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 if, you know, if I take this out, I'm going to get laughed at. The people are going to look at me weird, you know. And don't get me wrong. It's designed to be purposely small, like I said before. Um, this is something you can carry in a, like a small pocket, um, you know, male or female jeans, you know, like a fifth pocket or whatnot. And um, if you actually have the full setup, which I think I have it here, um, and I showed it in one of my other videos about uh, office knives, uh, it comes with a bunch of stuff, including this little pouch. Uh, and it has a, uh, a lanyard with a holster, uh, or a sheath, excuse me, I, I'm thinking about guns and holsters. This is a knife and a sheath, um, and you can carry it on your neck. So it's a nice little neck carry uh, folding knife. But um, say you don't want to do something like that, say you want to carry it old school, you want something a little bit bigger, well, that's when his big bro comes in. And, that, and I don't want to say big bro because they've named it the medium. And I'll get to that in a second. But in any case, this is uh, the reticulin, uh, the medium sized version, okay? And as you can see, uh, there's a lot of style similarities. In fact, uh, it's essentially the same knife. There we go. Um, the only thing is it's been, um, it's been scaled up quite a bit. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like in Zoolander, it's like, you know, when they, when they show them the, the building for kids that can't read. What is this? A center for ants! <laughs> um, in any case, uh, you know, they, they did go significantly bigger with this size. It went from a uh, a two-inch blade to about a three-and-a-quarter, I want to say almost three-inch blade. I mean, let me look here and just make sure. Uh, yeah, uh, you're you're looking at a blade, actual usable blade length of uh, a little, uh, about three inches, maybe a little bit more because of the curve. And we're looking at it like about a quarter inch between um, the actual usable blade, like just the, the, the very end of this and uh, the scale itself, okay? So like the little guy, okay? 
there's uh, there's a lot of uh, swerves and curvatures and stuff, and you can see the contouring in the handles, just the the milling in the titanium, um, which I will I, I do want to talk about. But one thing that I did notice, okay, is when I looked up the information on uh, the smaller guy, which uh, it's just over about a hundred bucks if you're choosing to get. It. I think it's about one eleven, and it comes with everything that you saw the uh, the neck lanyard and uh, the, 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 the sheath um, and your choice of different colors, you know, for the, the, the scales in titanium and um, either a standard S35VN or a Damascus blade. What this one actually does is they don't provide a Damascus blade. Um, they, they stick with it at S35VN and you get your choice of either the uh, standard, you know, the satin coated, uh, the satin flats with the stonewash finish. So it's a uh, it's actually the opposite of this one, which was the satin flats and the stonewash finish. Uh, or you get a black coated blade. Both versions are gonna be an S35EN. And then for the uh, the scales, uh, you can get a flat titanium like this one, just your standard, or you can get it um, in a variety of anodized uh, uh, variants, okay? Now, personally, I like this one because this way, if you want it to, to look a different way, uh, than what would typically come from factory. You have basically a clean slate to be able to go ahead and create any version of anodization you want. Depending on the voltage, uh, you can even send it out to somebody and they'll go ahead and uh, either heat or, you know, voltage, uh, uh, you know, electrically uh, anodize it for you. I've seen some awesome stuff. Uh, if you want to see some really cool stuff, you might want to check out a Way of Knife MI or um, EDC Gearhouse. They do some really, really cool stuff with anodization on other knives. And I'm sure they would be able to go ahead and throw some really cool uh, patterns on for this guy. So uh, that said, uh, it does open and close a little bit easier because of the size, okay? Um, now on this one, let me see if it has it on the uh, the small one because I didn't check that at the beginning. It does, okay. So um, one, of the, one of the things that it does take from its uh, younger brother is that it has a little bit of jimping right here, okay? It's not actually the whole thing that's covered. Come on, come on, show it to me. There we go. It's not the whole thing that's covered. You get about three little scallops here for the jimping, and that allows you to be able to go ahead and use either the flipper to open it, okay? Or you can actually use the uh, the thumb hole and just kind of like finger flick it open just like that. And I gotta tell you, um, the grind on this is extremely thin. Um, it's it's very nice and slicey. The, ba the blade stock looks a bit, um, you know, thick from the top, but you can see the grind is just, very, very aggressively thin. Looks great. This is going to be a great knife to slice with. And uh, it goes nice and high. I just love how it ellipses here. Um, just just a beautiful, beautiful blade design. Um, like I said before, S35 VN steel. You're pretty good to go when it comes to that. That is the de facto standard. I mean, if it was good enough for Chris Reeves knives, I mean, it's good enough for everybody else, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, the, uh, the S35 VN comes from here in the U.S., uh, it's used in, uh, you know, the, the, the best tech knives and um, pretty much any of the large, the medium size version that you get is going to be an S35VN. Now, I want you to go ahead and take a look at this now. Um, take a good look at, let me go ahead and see if I can, there we go. Uh, take a good look at the scales. It looks flat, but it's kind of like contoured here. It's got like this, you know, the milling here and stuff like that. There's a lot of detail on both sides. Um, not exactly something you'd see that is uh, very Isham, uh, very sleek though. Uh, a lot of nice curves, knives and stuff, uh, curvature on the knife and um, very sleek. But if you look closer, let me see if I can get it as close as I possibly can. All right, there we go. Okay, hopefully I'll be able to see, you'll be able to see it. If you look close, you might see some texturing there. That texturing is like micro milling. It is insane. It's on both sides. You can see it. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, you can see it really good there. That is the kind of texturing, okay? And it's just on the sides. Okay, so it's on this side and it's on this side. This side here and this side. Come on. There we go. And, you know, just the, the, the standard uh, majority of the scale here is... Um, is you know it's it's not uh, it's not textured like that. Now that is the extent of detail that goes into this knife. Little subtleties that you would typically not find in your average knife. And I have to 
hand it to uh, to Best Tech, okay? Not only just to create a small design like this, but then to go ahead and translate it into something bigger like this, and then create subtle design, uh, um, you know, intricacies like that. That kind of thing you can only get from a company that has really, really tweaked in their process for, for OEM. And when I say OEM, they make their own knives, and sometimes they even make knives for you know, uh, famous uh, knife makers. Uh, you may have heard of Adam Purvis. You may have heard of, of a couple of others that actually do business with uh, Best Tech. Um, they do some really high quality stuff. I, I I have maybe one out of all the ones that I've tried out that have, you know, it's kind of like there's been one design flaw and it's really not even the knife itself. It's more the clip. Uh, I will review it for the channel because, you know, I want to give an unbiased review on that. But I mean, you look at the grind. You know, I mean, just the little intricacies here and there. And I mean, that that scale, you know, the uh, the clip, beautiful, beautiful setup, you know, and it's not just on the medium sized one. It's on the smaller one as well. I mean, beautiful blue and yellow, like kind of like a splatter anodization there. And then the clip, it even translates from the small one to the big guy uh, or the medium sized guy. I keep saying big guy for whatever reason. But um, that being said, one thing that I will say that I'm kind of, uh, you know, disappointed on and, and, you know, take it as you will, but I'm sorry, lefties, uh, this is tipped only for right hand carry. And um, at least in the small versions case, you can go ahead and remove this clip and you can put it on your neck. So that way you can deploy it either with your left or your right. Um, so you, you at least have that advantage with the small one. Um, now, one disadvantage is if you like this one, Okay, and you're like, okay, I paid $111 for the small one, which let me go ahead and deploy it and place it right here. Um, you're basically going to be paying double for what is essentially like double the size for uh, the larger one. This one, uh, the medium size is going for just a little over $220, uh, if I recall correctly. And that's uh, that's a pretty penny to pay. But then again, you know, you're, you're getting the eyes from tax guys. You're, you're getting, you know, quality design um you know with quality oem from you know a company like best tech they have some really really cool stuff that's out um this is one of them that i am i'm, I'm really glad that you know uh passed by my desk and um let's go ahead and see what these look like sized up against some other um you know edc knives that i actually uh carry every now and then so first and foremost we have the protech sbr this is the les george design from uh protech knives that's s35vn and uh, milled aluminum scales okay what else we got here uh, this is the uh spyderco pair of three this is the standard version in g10 with s30v scale uh excuse me s30v steel mxg deep carry clip like i said you know plain jane uh pair of three you have the, uh, let's see here, the Kershaw Dividend. This is the uh, 420 high carbon uh, steel version with a you know, deep carry clip uh, from, from Kershaw and uh, the black FRN scales, okay? The medium size version is still much bigger, uh, still a little bit bigger than, uh, than that. Um, you have the Concept Pelican. Now, uh, this is a newer design and I haven't reviewed it, but I am gonna go ahead and talk about it. Really, really liking this design from Concept Knives. Um, <clears throat> most of the knives that come from uh, the, the the person who made this, and I'm hoping that he has it, yeah, K-Maxrum. <laughs> it's K-M-A-X-R-O-M uh, design. K-Maxrum is what the way I'm gonna say it. I know I'm butchering it and I apologize. If somebody knows how to say it and pronounce it right, let me know, <laughs> throw me a bone here. Um, I'm pretty sure all of his knives are named Pelican. But in this case, this is the Concept Nice Pelican. Really, really nice uh, uh, folder, which by the way, I mean, I'm totally, uh, you know, derailing this, but check this out. You have this with the thumb stud, okay? But you can actually <laughs> use it as a front flipper too. So yeah, moving on, <laughs> I'm sorry. ADD up in this, B-I-T-C-H. All right, um, <laughs> this is the um, Artisan Cutlery or CJRB Centros from Dylan Mallory. It's a little bit bigger than both. And last but not least, the Benchmade North Fork. Okay, so there you have both. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take away the medium sized and I'm gonna place the small one on this side so you can go ahead and see the specs on this. 
right there. Okay. Now, feel free to go ahead and pause so you can go ahead and see that. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm also going to show the medium size specs. Put place that right there. Okay. And you should see it on your right hand side of the screen right now. There you go. Okay. So, what are my thoughts on both? Well, the truth is, um, I think that they both add, you know, something to the eyes from line of, of designs that uh, show that, you know, something doesn't have to be really big and boisterous and very, you know, Elon Musk-ish uh, to be able to go ahead and be a very nice looking knife. Ergonomically, it feels, you know, pretty good in the hand. Um, but, and, and this is where I'm gonna go ahead and give my, my thoughts about it. Um, you know, the, the small one was a little bit, uh, it was just, you know, too small for me. That's, that's the honest truth. So that, I'm gonna go ahead and place that right here. And then the medium size one, um, when I read the specs on it, I was like, wow, this is, this is a pretty good size for EDC. I'm kind of surprised that they're calling it a medium. So that means if this happens to sell well, let me go ahead and clean this right quick. You see here. That means if this happens to sell well, that there is actually a possibility for a large version of this to come out. Now this has a 3.3 inch blade and it fits pretty well in the hand. So you can see there. Okay. I would venture to guess that the large version would be probably too big for most people to EDC unless you are really into large knives. And I would hate to see the price point for something like that being that this is 111 and this is 220 ish or something like that now um you don't get damascus on this one you don't get a coated blade on this one this one has the stone wash uh, uh grind with the satin flats this has the stone wash flats with the satin grind um you don't get like that splatter anodization on the small one but you get different types of uh, anodization on the scales for this one and you get a your choice of the standard or the black blade neither of them are uh set up for left-handed carry and for me one thing i noticed about this um is that you know you see it and you see this little area right here and you're like oh okay well that's either you know it's a sharpening tool or uh, which which actually works quite well or uh, it's kind of like a finger choil. Now, the thing is, finger choils are typically, and I'm going to go ahead and see if I can find my spider girl, which seems to have disappeared like it usually does during times like these when I need it the most. Where are you? Oh, here we go. All right. You have your spider girl here, and you see a nice rounded choil. Now, one of the few times I'm going to bring this up, uh, you know, that spider girl did do right. They have the jimping and they have a nice rounded uh, toil here and then they have the jimping back here so that you can go ahead and get a, get a nice purchase on it okay now i'm going to keep this in frame so you can go ahead and take a look at that all right and keep that in mind with this okay you don't really have that hump here and you have a little little bit of a toil here but there are no um th there's there's no jimping there's nothing like that on this side i'm going to get a little bit closer there so you can see Okay, there's no jimping here. There's no jimping here. There's very, actually, there's no jimping anywhere except for right on the flipper tab. So, by the way, action on this is actually very, very good. You open it. It feels kind of awkward when you have it like this in your hand. It, fe it feels like it's too much of a scallop for like, for you to dig your, your, you know, your finger into, and it kind of drives this into the meat of your hand. And that's the honest truth, um, at least for me. Okay. I don't have very large hands. I, I have kind of chunky medium, so say extra medium sized hands. And um, just the way that it feels, it feels like something is missing here, you know, to kind of like, you know, cushion against the back of my, my, uh, the meat here in my palm. And um, I just, I feel like I wanna have something here to be able to go ahead and uh, and kind of uh, kind of grip for me, kind of like the Pair 3 does, okay? Also, the, the choil right here has nothing here to be able to go ahead and support with. And you can still, you know, hold it this way, much like you would, you know, with the Pair 3 where you hold it, but it doesn't feel as secure. And if for whatever reason you happen to pass over this, if you notice that there's a bit of a ledge between this and the actual blade. And I did do that choil here, but um, with that ledge, that allows you to not get cut. Here, you go past that ledge, you're going straight into blade and you are gonna get cut, you're gonna get bit. So something, you know, as a bit of a warning, 
Uh, if you do use that little location as a finger twirl, just be wary of that. Um, you know, don't you don't want to use this with wet hands. I think Nick Shabazz talks about, you know, if you work in the Vaseline factory or, you know, in his, his you know, more Goldman voice, um, you don't want to go ahead and use that little area. But you can use it as a finger twirl. You can definitely use this as a, uh, let's see if I can do it. There we go. Yeah, you can use this as a, uh, a thumb hole or a finger hole. So you can a spidey flick it just like the regular spider goes, okay? Or you can use the, the flipper. Now, these require a specific type of technique when you're using the flipper. You don't flip it from here, you flip it from above and it's like a light switch, okay? And that being said, that's pretty much everything that I did want to go ahead and talk about as far as feedback for that particular knife. Um, <clears throat> a lot of it translates to the smaller one, but the truth is the smaller one, it's kind of uncomfortable because of the fact it's so small. To get it in your hand correctly, I kind of got to like position my, my, you know, my ring finger down here, my middle finger right here, and then just kind of leave this in the meat of my hand and just kind of like flick it that way. <laughs> And the, the little finger hole there, it's kind of for decoration because like, I can't, yeah, I guess I can. There you go, guys. That is the first time I've been able to do it. I tried that maybe 50 times off camera. I wasn't able to do it, but I was able to do it now for you guys. You guys empower me. So um, there you go. I'm, I'm not really feeling this, but this actually would be pretty cool if, uh, you know, you're working in an office, you don't need... Um, you know, a large knife, but you want to have something near you in case you want to have some utility and you're willing to shell out, you know, a little bit over, you know, hundred and so bucks. And you want something different from say like your standard, you know, like your spider go dragonfly, something of that, you know, size, you're going to be able to get something like that with this. And, um, I, you know, in that particular case, it's a very slicey uh, blade. If you thought that the grind on this was nice and the blade stock, the blade stock on this is even thinner and the, the, you know, just, the the whole package itself lends itself to being a nice slicey little knife you'd like to be able to go ahead and put a lanyard on this but it does not come that way it does come with a sheath though so you can go ahead and carry it uh you know uh, around your neck and deploy that way um <clears throat> so those are my thoughts on the two um they both did come with nice even grinds from the factory best tech does pretty well when it comes to actually sharpening their knives Although the truth is, if you're going to spend 111 or, you know, 222 or two, say 100 plus or 200 plus on a knife, I really hope that you can at least shell out, you know, 40, 50 bucks on like, you know, that new workshop system with the different stones, uh, you know, get yourself like a KME, like, you know, the one that I have. Uh, with the different stones or even just get yourself a spider go sharp maker just to kind of touch up the edge and make sure that everything is as to to spec because when you have a nice slicey blade and the edges are wonky and they're not you know completely uh, uh, ev uh, even on both sides you're not going to get the same cutting quality that it was designed for and you're going to feel like it's just not performing as it should that isn't as necessarily the case don't blame the knife blame the person who sharpened it so uh, that said, you can send it to somebody or you can have it sharpen yourself. I prefer to sharpen my knives myself. I have not had to, to do that with these. All I've had to do is, is uh, strop them um, and they've worked uh, fantastically. So, uh, you know, just with this, you get yourself a little strop like this guy. This is a micro strop, uh, you know, nice bare leather. And, uh, you know, just get work, go to town, you know, just kind of like work it this way. You know, it's nice. It's almost like ASMR kind of thing you know, for a couple minutes. I tend to do it while I'm working. And by the time that's done, guys, this stuff is ridiculously hair whittling sharp. So that said, there you go. Um, and just remember guys, uh, whether you choose the medium or the small one, this is an Isham design and you're gonna get some great quality with it. I'm kind of interested to see because of the fact that they called this a medium, what the large would look like. But just remember guys, whether you choose the small or the medium. If you EDC, think of DCS. Thank you so much for watching. That has been my presentation of the reticulin, both the small and the medium. And a uh, huge shout out to Best Tech, uh, Best Tech's customer service team, as well as the homies on the Apex Pass Around, my buddy uh, from uh, Ray from Everyday City Carry, uh, Justin from Tier One. Uh, if you haven't checked out his page, make sure to go ahead and check it out. You'll see this particular logo on there. That's uh, T1, but it is a uh, Tier One. And uh, yeah, that's basically it, guys. I am going to go ahead and let you go because I'm going to put these to uh, a little bit more testing. And if you have any questions, sound off below or send me a message 
uh, either at dailycarrysolutions at gmail.com or my Instagram at dailycarrysolutions. That being said, I got to go. Take it easy, guys. Peace.